Hello viewers, welcome back to Thames FC and I can sense it now. You're excited, aren't you? Because you can sense, just based upon this screen alone, things are happening. So much to take from this current this current thing you can see. Thames lie second behind Oxford City. Bit of a deja vu there, considering a few seasons ago. Mark Miles is top goal scorer. Christian Friars has the most assists. Andy Douglas, the central midfielder that barely plays, is on an 8.47. What the bloody hell's gone on? We have a balance of £216,000. I've mentioned it already, but I'll say it again. We're second in the league table after four games. And names like Chris Day and Kevin McCormack, you're not entirely sure. So let's start with the finances then, and let's let's survey what's happened here to get £216,000. It's a simple process. It's something people have been suggesting for a long time, but hasn't been possible until we're in the real leagues of football manager. And uh, let me take you over to the schedule. It'll also reveal how we've started the season. So... <laughs> It's quite funny. They're the friendlies we played at the start of the year. It's fair to say, playing against the good sides set us up quite well for the coming season. Uh, Birmingham, Portsmouth, Leighton Orient, Aston Villa, Brighton, Cardiff, Blackburn, Brentford, Burton, Charlton and Burnley. Um, we earned a lot of money for playing all of those games. Our gate receipts this year, once again, much like last year, surpass what we made last year. So... You know, and we're only in August, so it works very well. I'm I'm unashamed of it. You know, look, we're, we are we are whoring ourselves out like nobody's business. So there we are. Terms have made a load of money. Uh, hopefully, it now means that we'll see the season. Basically, it's just staying in profit, which is the problem. So we're just trying that, and hopefully, if we continue with the cup run that we've not had for a little while, who knows what we could achieve? Now, there were lots of names that you've not recognised before, so let's go over to those now. Now, in terms of released players, I always bring you to this list. Uh, if you look through it, you will recognise pretty much no names. Uh, they're all sort of youth and reserve players that never really featured that turned out not to be very good let's pick Samuel Meakin for example there's a reason he's been released at 16 it's a bit harsh isn't it really so this is the main page then and once again you'll know we've not spent any money on transfers so I'm trying to avoid that for now we've, we've never actually bought a player as of yet uh, but let's start with the outs actually Adam Worthington has left the team a striker that played now and again has gone to Birmingham it's a similar situation to Jordan O'Connor I feel like he's sort of disappeared and uh, I don't know if we'll see the likes of him again he, he never really impressed in a Tem shirt which was disappointing. His best season was five appearances when he didn't score, but had a 7.23, which is interesting. But he's gone to Birmingham, where he might be all right for them. And Andy Farrell, a little bit heartbroken by this, because he was playing well for me. He played a lot last year, 42 matches, but has, uh, has gone to stay into the Boswick Premier, a division that probably suits his talents slightly better. And uh, yeah, we've replaced him, but he, he was good for me last year, so it's a bit of a shame. And that brings us to the ends, and there's a name immediately. You're all, your minds are excited. It's the return of Andy Tannoy, the two-star current ability, two-star potential, can't run, but can pass, take free kicks, and has got decent teamwork and work rate. It's all you want in a midfielder. But actually, there is a reason for getting him. The system we play does play with a central midfielder on the defensive duty at a position that Andy Tannoy is natural in. So there is some method behind the apparent madness. Uh, if you if you watch the start of the series, Andy Tannoy was with us. He went away a little bit, spent a long time at Ellsbury United, where he was eventually released. Uh, one year, he got 14 assists and seven goals, which is quite impressive. Uh, but he joins us back in the Vanarama South, a division he's played at the le this level before quite a long time ago and uh, yeah he'll do a fine backup job in the centre of midfield that, that's why he's brought, uh, brought in he's not a starter so it's fine I keep telling myself. Right, there's lots of names to get through. The team has improved, like you've seen the start of the year, the team has improved quite a bit, and uh, that is due to a lot of the new faces coming in. Kevin McCormack is another central uh, central defender, sorry, who could be very good. We've tried to get in not just players that are good right now, but are potentially quite good for the future. Uh, has spent time at Coventry, similar situation to Steve Foster, you might recall, uh, and we've gone back there and got another one of their lads that wanted to join. There's not very many that want to join, but he did want to join, and uh, yeah, a, a decent little centre-back, I think you'll agree. Uh, Des Wilson, we had him last year, and we We've got him back, but unhappy to loan him back to me. It uh, was pretty good for me last year. We'll probably play again, maybe a little bit more this year, actually, as he's progressed a little bit better. Um, he's, he's nicely well-rounded, central midfield. I like him. I just think he, he's a good, not just a good backup option, but can start games as well. So, uh, Des Wilson, hello. We've gone back to Burton, and you've already seen Christian Fries. I hadn't seen all these green arrows, uh, but the quick left-sided player uh, is, is what we're looking for, really. I, I wanted someone who was an upgrade on Hemmings from last year, and I think the pace, the physical attributes were the, the stand-up for me. Very, very quick. Uh, good agility, balance, and you can see he's improving all the time. 21 years of age, uh, spent time, I say, at Burton. He's recently gone there on a free transfer after spells at Buxton. Um, so... I don't know, so far he's had a good start to the year. Three assists, one goal, 7.32. Very good start. Hopefully he continues it today. Now, Mark Miles, this is the man. This is the new man. Okay, Liam Denan, I hate to tell you, is going to have to sit out a little while until Mark Miles doesn't impress me. The 20-year-old Welshman has been brought in. Uh, he had a year last year, 
It seems weird. Played for Hereford, 22 appearances, zero goals. He's coming for me. It was it was attribute-based signings, really. It, mentals at this age, I think, for, for a 20-year-old, very good. Pacey, good first touch, good finishing. I like that a lot. That like He moves into channels. He's, he's what I want in a striker for this team. And so far, his career at Thames started really well. He's not prolific until now. And we're going to get the best out of him. I, I'm very good with Welsh unknowns. So, Jeff Thomas, shout out to you. Uh, keeping on the striker front, Rob Grit has, uh, has also been brought in. Uh, spent time at Bournemouth, Leighton Orient, uh, to be sort of notable names. Last year was at the Eastern County's premier side, Haver Hill, uh, and has now joined us. Probably on a backup basis. Uh, good dribbling, finishing is quite good. Physically, okay. Okay, technically okay as well. Uh, the mentals for me, though, again, stand out. Good flair, great teamwork, work rate. The backup striker that can uh, can do a decent job when relied upon. Now, this man here, I like a lot. It doesn't jump off the page, I don't think, as like a, a, a surefire bet. He won't even play today, which is really disappointed. He started the season really well, uh, playing every single game. A 6.9 probably is a little bit unjust because we've not kept clean sheets. That's been part of the problem. But I think as a defensive option, John Pring on that left-hand side of a back two, good heading, good marking, good tackling. For this division, remember, not for like the upper reaches of football manager, but um, yeah, for Physically very good as well. Good acceleration. Great strength. Only 5'11". That might be a bit of a concern, but his mentals are very, very good. Positioning, a little bit of a worry, but I think also as an all-round package with a bit of room to grow as well, 23 years of age, I think he'll be a really good addition to the team. I like this one a lot. I think John Pring could be here for a while. And then finally, Chris Day, another left-sided player. Um, I'm going to sort of train him to play a little bit further ahead because I want him to play in this sort of advanced left role, uh, which is not a natural like right now. He's, he's more natural, a little bit deeper. So we'll work on him. Good pace, though. Crossing dribbling finishing first touch again not a standout player with some standout attributes apart from maybe his pace but nicely well-rounded and i think we can do a lot with that so they're the boys then and now uh, let's introduce you to the look of the team a new season it's always exciting and uh after formation that will be familiar to you you've seen it before it's back again and uh, we've been scoring lots of goals at the start of the season so we're going to continue with it the back two then uh today will be togwell and McCormack, there's going to be question marks, actually, and I should probably address this. Uh, why is Hallett still your goalkeeper, Ben? What's that all about, mate? Well, last year, 12 clean sheets out of 42 games. It's not dreadful. Not kept any this year, but don't worry about that. But the honest answer is, viewers, and believe me, I've tried. This is the best guy on offer right now. Our reputation is continually a problem, and uh, Tony Haller is still the best bet that we have right now. I will continue to look, as I always do, throughout the season to pick up maybe a free that becomes available or becomes interested. Uh, but for now, Tony Haller is the man. So he will be in goal this season. Uh, the back four, Hamer again will be at right back. He, he can sort of continue to rotate with uh, Joseph McCormick. It's confusing. We've got two McCormicks now. Uh, we've got Kevin McCormack to play in that central back area then. I just mentioned him. He's been brought in. Pring would ordinarily play uh, where Togwell is, but because of the injury, he has to play today. So Togwell remains at the club and at the back. Uh, Korta. Korta? Korta? Korta. I think it's Korta. That sounds bad, Ben. George, we'll say. George is at left back. George was actually brought in last year, but didn't feature too much. Played a lot of reserve matches. Uh, has now come through this year. I think he's just the sort of... We lost Farrell, so I needed to bring someone in. I do think, again, he's one of those players. Not a lot of standout statistics, but... Or attributes, sorry. But um, just is quite nicely rounded, technical-wise. Seven crossing, six dribbling. There's not like loads of ones and twos in there. We can do a little bit of everything. Maybe not particularly well, but for a full-back, decent tackling. Okay, heading. Marking's not too bad. Passing isn't, isn't dreadful either. I think he'll do a fine job now move forward a little bit then and this has sort of been more down to circumstance than design Hallahan is sitting in that defensive midfield role I've already mentioned he and potentially Andy Tanoi will rotate in there Douglas on one side Wilson on the other Douglas only started really because Steve Foster took a while to come back from his injury I remember last episode he got a broken ankle um or maybe the episode before that got a broken ankle so he's been unavailable so Douglas has come in and he's not really a natural in the attacking central midfield role, but we played him through necessity. 8.48 is his average rating. And actually, if you look at the entire league spectrum, he's up there right now, second in the league as well for, uh, for, for performance. So let him play. Uh, we've got Friars, as mentioned, Maloney on one side. Christy Clark Slocum remains as well. And, uh, and Mark Miles up top through the middle. Of course, names like George Heaven are still here. Lee Scott's still here. Lukey Bruce is still here. You remember him from last episode? Um, we've still got Liam Denan in the club. There's quite a lot of names that are still here. Familiar faces, Brett Squires, Wayne Atkinson. Um, but we've, we've gone for a proper rejig of the team so far. And as I mentioned, it started off very well. Four wins out of four. A couple of close games in there. Some late goals from Christy Clark, uh, Clark Slocum. They've got us some late wins as well. 
but yeah, I'm really, really impressed. And hopefully today, against the Corinthian casuals, we'll step up and do the business. So lots to get through. A lot of information to take in. Of course, throughout the season, you will learn about the new players as we continue. But let's get into some games then, and let's play our first of the episode, our only game of the episode because of all the other bits that have gone on, the Corinthian casuals. Let's give them a beating. Now, I don't actually know. I wonder what my record against the Corinthian casuals is. So we've won four and lost five okay so they've actually got the best of me uh liam canavan also can't play today he's a doubt so again that's part of the reason andy douglas has come in and done so well uh, look, how would he do today now of course i'm very hyper about the team right now very excited about the team we've won four matches on the bounce today could only go one way for me so come on then let's see. let's see <laughs> i don't like the idea of it i do think we're getting a nice balance in the team now though i think the back we're a lot stronger at the back now system wise we're settled in this now hallahan an absolute key player within that i should, I should show hallahan you look at all the players we've just looked at there's nobody better nobody more well-rounded than jack hallahan i think we've got some players that could potentially be better than him but as of right now you i mean beautiful boy beautiful boy doesn't have a face pack but a beautiful boy we imagine okay they're playing a 4-4-2 a lot of their players look very similar they've all got sort of the worried look the two in the middle petrified no one's more petrified than thompson i don't know what he's seen but it my god eaton collins though he's, he's been a thorn in my side for quite some time he's been at corinthian casuals forever right then can our boys in the 451 do the business once again patrick said come on lads keep the run going and uh let's just play our natural game it would be nice today if we could keep a clean sheet we've played four matches not done that yet so <laughs> let's see if we can do it today now i'm hoping for not only a good performance uh, but a win as Cockrell first chance of the game. Thompson there. Challenge comes in by Wilson and a clearance. And actually, Wilson's cleared that to himself, which you don't see very often. He now charges forward. Born into middle could be dangerous. Wilson, what a move. Oh my, there we go. I mean, that's a little bit close for comfort. Miles heads it down to Clark Slocum. It was all about Des Wilson, though, who clears it, chases it up, and puts in a good, de a, a decent ball as well. You can see Wilson in the three dimensions bursting down this right hand side, the number eight. I mean, this is why he's in the team. On loan from Burton Albion, puts the ball into the middle. Mark, I mean, Mark Miles, I still say Mills there. Mark Miles has, has literally headed that down for Clark Slocum. Teamwork. I mean, Liam Danan doesn't know what's hit him. It's another free kick to them, though. Cockrell puts it in. Is this going to be, well, it's going to be a goal for them. Thornhill, no clean sheets. Forget the clean sheets. Not happening. Not happening. Will we keep one this year? That's the question. Decent ball, put into a dangerous area. We don't really mark it. I'm just going to ignore Hallop for now. Two early goals, though. It's all kicking off. Throw in deep in our half. We're going to have to work it quite neatly from back there. Douglas, though, we have a set of a really good start to the year. I mean, that's deflected, luckily, and uh, Hallahan is now on it. Where's he going to find the ball? To Wilson, who so far is having a tremendous game. Into Douglas, out to Clark Slocum. I and mean, this is the sort of way we seem to work things now. Right across the line to say, Miles is there. Oh, just wide. And uh, could have been a 2 1 score line. So far, it started really brightly. I do think the friendlies against the better sides. Uh, like we didn't get battered in any of them. It prepared us quite nicely as, oh, Miles, you've got to be finishing that. He's got Liam Dunan syndrome. Maybe it's just a nervous attitude when the cameras come on. I don't know. As uh, Friars, great ball out to him. Ball into the middle. There's Miles, doesn't quite put it under control. Wilson back to Hallahan. You can already see, though, dominant from us. There's Douglas into Miles. Oh, he's got he's got, he's got got Dunan syndrome. Miles, don't do this. It's your big moment. He's already got a nice assist, but he's a goal scorer. Come on. Douglas free kick in towards Wilson, cleared, and a clearance comes in, but we get there first, and there's Miles on it, and it's penalty, maybe? It is, the referee's given it, Thames to get a penalty kick, and uh, stepping up, number six, Hallahan's going to be on these, Hemmings, of course, not starting, so he's taken uh, away from that duty, and Hallahan's on it, and scores, 2-1 Thames, this could be a great year, I'm excited for one, this could be five wins from five, I think when, once it ticks over, we will indeed be top of the table, and uh, the perfect start has happened here, folks, five wins from five, keep this going, you can see a largely dominating display as well. I think we've seen from the highlights, it's been all Thames, really. They had that one chance, but I'm, I'm ignoring that. Okay, at half time, let's go for the uh, the passionate. He's playing well, still room for improvement. They like that. Get back out there, do it again. We're a lot more sort of mechanical this year, I feel like. There's a, there's a system in place. Everyone knows their role. I've got lots of players to play roles. If any injuries occur, I am covered. We've got the biggest squad ever, I think, Thames have had. Um, it's too big, if anything, but a lot of players are only playing on sort of uh, bonuses. Clark Slocum, that should have been a goal never mind but like a lot of the guys aren't on contracts they're on sort of pay as you play kind of deal so i mean it's fine really as uh thompson another free kick they've done this once before they've done it again i mean clearly defensively at set pieces we are a joke right well we've got to think about this a little bit now we've got we've got brucey boy on the uh, on the bench but with half an hour to go i do suspect we'll probably score again douglas into wilson as we work it again quite nicely lots of good foot eh, well let's, we'd have to talk about that 
We'll put it over the top. Don't need this. Hmm. Well, I'm not happy about this. Miles is having a better, less than best time. So we're going to switch to our sort of secondary formation, which is Shadow Striker. On comes Brucey, the Brucinator. We've played it before. We'll play it again. I could bring Danan on, but I need a goal. So obviously not. I'll go attacking as well. There could be a chance here, though. Hammer into Clark Slocum. It gets back to Hammer. And now Wilson into Clark Slocum again. Ball across. Douglas is there. And that's why he's having such a good year. Big goal. 3-3, three, three, 15 minutes. This game is there to be won. I, I do quite like the idea of the Shadow Striker stuff. A lot of people said train him as a target man. Based on last episode, I'm going to sort of keep him in this Shadow Striker S role and see how he develops in the next year or so. If it's not really working out, he's young enough that we can switch it around a little bit. All right, there's going to be a little change here, I think. Wilson is starting to struggle a little bit. Uh, Hallahan's going to go out there. Scott comes into the middle. That's a change I've done quite a lot already this season. So, um, yeah, with about 10 minutes to go, will we see another goal? Friars on this left-hand side has it under his possession decent ball forward into bruce if he can get it across he can clark slocum's there oh it should have been a goal dominant display there 18 shots for us in the game so they're six we've played really well that is what's kind of irritating me four minutes left to go um we're gonna shout at them i'm gonna tell them to push forward i want to go for this there are 50 seconds to go can there be can we keep the un well i'm not saying unbeaten streak can we keep the perfect record intact it goes to friars out to quanta on this side where's friars gonna go he's got to get a ball in ball's put to the back post clark slocum's there oh he does it christy clark slocum in the last seconds of the game a superb assist the cross whipped in and thames get a 4-3 victory what an episode loads of new names loads of new faces but it's christy clark slocum who delivers at the last fantastic ball put into the that post and Clark Slocum he loves a late goal does it again celebrates wildly and Thames five wins from five no clean sheets but it looks it looks as if here there it is we get the win massive goal Christy Clark Slocum he's better than Alexis Sanchez that's what you like to see Thames come out victorious and we we stay top of the table after a tremendous start I think the signings are pretty good let me know what you think signings wise uh, do you th who do you think will be the star man out of the, top of the players we've signed we didn't see the best of Mark Martin today i think we will do in the future he's been good so far this year andy douglas is becoming undroppable scored a vital goal in this game it says there's decisions to be made all over the pitch and uh, we didn't even have joe pring who in my opinion is probably our best center back in terms of a well-rounded option um so lots to be positive about tony hallett still potentially an issue and i'm sure you're going to let me know in the comment section but do let me know best signing and i'll see you again soon we love with care for the next time goodbye and what a way to end a season. Shout out to Casper who has upped his donation on Patreon. Thank you so much, sir. And Reese for a very generous support uh, over on Patreon as well. Thank you so much, boys. And uh, I appreciate it very much. Also, before we go, uh, I appeared on the Five Star Potential podcast, a We Stream FM production. It's the best football manager podcast out there, in my opinion. Uh, there's a link down in the description. We talk about football manager as an esport. There was an event recently, and uh, yeah, we talk a little bit about that and the future of football manager as an esport. So if you're interested, link down in the description.